Decomposition is one of the most useful tools to help diagnose your time series. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you what decomposition is, how we use it for additive and multiplicative models, and how we apply decomposition in Python. So let's get into it. On the screen now is a notebook that we're going to work through that's going to give us the main concepts behind decomposition. So let's first begin with just basically saying, you know, kind of what decomposition is. So being able to understand your time series is very important because that helps you create better forecasts and also interpret the results a lot, a lot more intuitively. Now, most time series can be broken down into three components, as I've written here. So the three components that we're mainly looking for are the trend, which is the overall motion of time series through time or like its overall nature. The seasonality, which is kind of like, is there any periodic, yearly, weekly, monthly um, fluctuation of the data that are repeatedly, or like I said, periodic patterns. And then we have the residual remainder. So basically the bit that's left over after we take into account trend and seasonality, AKA I just call it statistical noise in the data that just, you know, it's just there. We can model it by any form of you know, distribution. Now, the reason we want to understand this is that First of all, it's mainly used for analysis. So we, if we know the seasonal, seasonal components, trend components, we can better model it in our forecasts. And that's the overall goal, basically, to, under, to be able to really understand our model or understand our data to fit the best model possible to that data. Now, there are two main type of time series models we have. The first one, as I've written here, is the ads model. So ads and models where we simply just add the trend, seasonal, and the remaining components together. And there's the other one, which is the multiplicative model, which is basically where we our time series are basically a combination of each other, like T times S times R. So we're just multiplying the values together. Now, the, the difference between them is the idea of how much the variations change, um, you know, yearly or through time. So as a basic example here is that, let's say we have uh, some data, which is the ice cream sales. And let's say our ice cream sales are higher by a thousand every summer compared to the general mean across the year. Because they're, they're increasing by a thousand every summer, that's a fixed numerical number. And so the model is additive because our number is fixed. It's not, it's not increasing or decreasing through time. However, if the sales are higher by, say, like I've written here, by roughly 20% every summer, then this is not an absolute number anymore. It's a relative change. And because it's relative, it's now a multiplicative model because it's relative to what the overall um, sales are that year. Again, we'll go for an example to demonstrate this more, but that's basically the idea. Just remember, you know, additive is where the fluctuations are pretty much on a similar or the same scale throughout the time series. Multiplicative is where they're basically relative um, fluctuations of the time series. So they're either increasing or decreasing. Another way of thinking this is that the variance is changing through time. Um, now, the way you can make, you can also make a multiplicative model ad additive by simply using the log transform or the box code box Cox transform. Again, we discussed these in our previous videos, which will be linked somewhere on the screen here. But um, the idea of applying these transformations is to stabilize the variance. By stabilizing the variance, we then have our fluctuations at a consistent level through time. Um, again, the videos, you know, these videos I've covered before, or I've covered these topics in previous videos. So if you're interested in learning more about stationarity, the transformations, box Cox transform, make sure you check out those previous videos if you want to gain a deeper in, in understanding behind those because um, they're pretty important in this video here. But anyway, that's the main two things we want to worry about, the additive and multiplicative model. Again, don't, I'm not too, it's not too worry which one, you know, it's not really, it doesn't matter which one you have, it's more about understanding which one you do have, so therefore you can apply the correct um, decomposition techniques as we'll show in this video. The next thing I want to talk about is how we actually do decomposition in practice. So there are way, multiple ways of doing it. Um, I'm going to go over the classical approach in this video, which is the most intuitive and simple to understand. The, there are others, as I've written here, there's SDL, X11, Seats. Uh, these are a bit more, you know, kind of, they're more robust to certain types of data or certain outliers. Um, again, don't worry too much about these. The classical approach works well for most data. Uh, and that's this, which is more intuition behind the idea of how you decompose a time series as opposed to how you do these complicated methods. So the classical approach is as follows. So the first thing we do, as I've written here, is we compute the trend by using the rolling mean or rolling average of time series through time. After we have the trend component, we can then detrend our time series. Um, for an additive model, we simply take away the trend component from the time series. And for the multiplicative model, we simply divide it by the trend component. We then compute the seasonal component by taking the average uh, of each season for the detrended uh, data 
So essentially we take the average of, you know, say our data is indexed by month, we take the average of June, July, August, and that average combination will give us the seasonal effect um, for each month uh, after we've detrended de de it. And finally, to compute the residual, residual components, we basically just take the difference away from both those, both those trend and seasonal components. So for additive model, we just do the original time series, take away T and S, trend seasonality. And for multiple model, we simply just divide by T and S. And that will give us our three components. Again, it's not that too complicated. It's not that complicated, really. Um, we're just, you know, calculating one component, removing it, calculating another component, removing it, until we're left with just the residual or the remainder of the series. Again, pretty straightforward in my opinion. The other, the other methods decomposing, SDL, X11, and Seats, go into a bit more details. Um, feel free to look at those in your own time. But um, to gain the basic intuition, just think of a classical approach, and that's how we normally do it. Let's now go through a basic example to put all this theory into practice. So we'll first start with loading in some basic data set. So this data set, I've used my previous videos, it's just showing us the US airline passenger volume for the years of 1949 to 1960. Uh, the data set will be linked in the description along with the notebook and also the Medium article if you want to work through it in your spare time. So all this data set is showing us is basically how many people in the US you know, use commercial airliners throughout the 50s, essentially. Now there's a few things to note here. We can clearly see the trends increasing through time and also we see the seasonal fluctuations um, on a yearly level. This data is indexed by month, by the way. Uh, are pretty obvious and they're also increasing through time. So every November or winter months we have a dip in the passenger volume and every summer we have, we have a peak in the passenger volume. But also the, the changes of these, the difference between the November uh, dip and the summer peak is also increasing through time, which is pretty obvious for this data. Now as it's increasing through time, like the fluctuations, we then have a multiplicative model, right? It's not, it's not a constant fluctuation, it's very relative and increasing um, compared to the average mean of passenger volumes, so it's multiplicative. As we've got a multiplicative model, the way we seasonally decompose our data is through this function here that I basically called in from this stats models tsa.seasonal. And then when we call this function on our data, what we're going to do is we're going to specify that it's a multiplicative model. So then it knows that when it's decomposing it to take the relative difference between the components as opposed to the additive difference up to the components. And by applying this function, we get this. So as you can see, this function has really captured the components of our series really well. Like I said, the trends are increasing through time and the seasonal components pretty periodic as shown here. Really good. We can now basically diagnose time series really well using this just simple seasonal decompose function that you can just import and apply to your data set. Like I said before though, we can change our data to be additive from multiplicative by simply applying a logarithm transform or a box cox transform. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to apply our box cox function that we get from the sci-fi stats module. We are going to apply that to our uh, multiplicative decomposition time series to get the additive time series. And then we apply the same seasonal decompose function uh, that we got from stats models. But this time we're going to specify the models additive by passing in the additive time series that we just created. And by plotting that, we get this. So again, very similar. We see the trends increasing through time. We've captured the periodic yearly pattern really well. Um, again, it looks exactly the same. And the key point I want to drive home here is that it doesn't really matter which your data is. Is it, is it you know, additive or multiplicative? It's more about understanding which is the correct argument to pass into this function so, the, so it can adequately, adequately you know, decompose your time series. So that's the main point to really take home here. Let's quickly recap of the key points we discussed in this video. So decomposition is a technique that's able to diagnose time series to three components, the trend, seasonality, and remainder. It doesn't really matter which one you have. The key point is that you'll be able to recognize which one it is, so you can correctly apply the right argument into the function when you're trying to decompose your time series. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to learn more about time series and forecasting, make sure you watch the other videos in this playlist. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.